to the WREL Daily Download, I'm Megan Glova. Now, weather is a big topic of discussion this week, not just our local heat, but Hurricane Barrel and its path. WREL meteorologist Brian Schrader joins me now to talk about this intense and sadly deadly storm. Hey, Brian. Hey there. So let's back up a bit about when did we start to see barrel form, where, and how has it progressed since then? Yeah, barrel formed in uh, late June in a part of the ocean called the Main Development Region. It is sort of along the middle part of the Atlantic Ocean, like sort of the central part of the Atlantic Ocean, north of the equator. And that is typically where we see storms developing as you really head into the heart of hurricane season in August, September you know, that's that's typically where the big storms form. Right. This time of year, we tend to look at the Gulf and the Caribbean for where storms form generally this time of year. But one of the many things unusual about Beryl is that it forms so far to the east. This is not necessarily an unprecedented storm, but certainly an unusual storm. So what's more rare, the location or the intensity of it at this time of year? Yeah, it's the intensity that really sticks out. This was the earliest uh, cat four hurricane in the Atlantic, uh, and by a wide margin, and then it became the earliest Cat 5 hurricane in the Atlantic, again, by a very wide margin, uh, by, by an order of like three or four weeks. So extremely unusual to see that strong of a hurricane this early in the year. Yeah. And at one point, like you said, it was a Category 5. Mm-hmm. I believe it hit Jamaica as a Category 4, and we've seen it weakening since then. What are we going to expect this weekend? It, it has been weakening, but it's slow to weaken. It's kind ah. of, it has sort of overperformed the models a little bit, it's, it's holding onto its strength a little longer. It is weakening. It looks like it's going to continue to weaken as it makes landfall probably this morning, Friday morning, uh, along the east coast coast of the uh, Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico. Then it goes across the Yucatan and emerges in the southern part of the Gulf of Mexico, where we believe it's going to make landfall sometime Monday morning uh, around Brownsville, Texas, there in the Rio Grande Valley, South Texas. The jury's still out a little bit just because the way the storm has behaved when you verify with the forecast as to where it's actually gone, it's kind of been moving a little bit to the north. So there's a chance that even farther north up the Texas coast, maybe toward Corpus Christi, uh, they may deal with some of these effects from the storm. Just have to watch it over the weekend. One of the other things we have to watch for is will it re-intensify when it gets over that warm Gulf water? And there is a chance that it could re-intensify. Right now, the National Hurricane Center believes it's going to hit as a low-end Cat 1 hurricane uh, there in the south part of Texas. But the way that this storm has been, it may be stronger. So you really have to pay attention to it. Okay, gotcha. And can you kind of give me a little refresher as to um, kind of how these categories differ from one another? Yeah, it's mostly about wind speed. Uh, So Cat 5 starts at uh, 155 mile an hour winds. So when you get into that category of a hurricane, you're talking about the strongest of the strong. Um, and something else I want to point out, when we talk about, you know, the, the farthest east that a hurricane is formed in the tropical Atlantic in June, uh, you know, uh, the, the earliest Cat 5 in recorded history, that goes back to 1851. So there's a long period of time there where we had ship reports and, you know, anecdotes about hurricanes that made landfall. But you're only talking about, you know, about 170 years of recorded weather history, yeah. and then only about 50 to 60 years of satellites that could spot hurricanes where there were no people. So when we say this, you know, the earliest uh, Cat 5 on record, you have to remember that is within this relatively brief window of history, you know, 1500, 1600, be, be before that, billions of years, who knows? But as far as our records go, it certainly has made its mark. Okay, super interesting. We're going to take a quick break, but when we come back, we'll touch on what we can expect from Barrel locally and statewide this weekend. All right, welcome back. Brian, before the break, we were talking about the intensity of Hurricane Barrel and some of its hardest hit spots so far. But can we expect an impact here at home or even statewide 
on our beaches, especially as people stick around for the holiday weekend. It's uh, Even though it is so far away from us, some of the swells, uh, ocean swells, are making their way to the North Carolina coast and increasing the rip current danger and also cr- contributing at least somewhat to the rough seas. So that is something you need to watch through the weekend. Uh, my best advice is to tune in. If you're heading to the beach, tune in to WRL News in the morning, and we'll be able to keep you up to date with what the rip current forecasts are along the North Carolina coast. And you really need to take those seriously. I just read that Thursday uh, on the New Hanover County beaches, they had at least 17 water rescues just just uh, rather on Wednesday, July 3rd. Right. Uh, and right now there's a report of a drowning as we speak this afternoon at uh, Curie Beach. So... You really have to take that seriously. As far as around here, we're not going to see any significant uh, barrel-related impacts. Okay. Unfortunately, we could use some of the rain, you know? Yeah, right. Yeah. I guess uh, going back to beach safety, mm-hmm. we touch on this every summer, but might just be a good relevant time to talk on it again. What are some of those water safety points that people should keep in mind as things intensify at the beach? Pay attention to those flags. They're going to have the flags up, and if it is uh, a high rip current risk, you really should not be in the water. Moderate rip current risk. I wouldn't get in the water in, under those conditions. If you do get pulled into a rip current, uh, the best thing to do is swim parallel to the shore. And, uh, you know, I, you really have to tell yourself to calm down. You're, you're panicking at that point. So you really have to try to keep your wits about you. Swim parallel to the shore, and eventually you will break free from that current. Okay, good to know. And even though we won't feel... Too much of barrels impacts here in our area. What is the rest of our hurricane season looking like? You know, when when you have a Category 5 storm in uh, July, uh, you have to take note. We've been telling you that uh, most of the hurricane forecasters believe that this is going to be an above average season. And certainly it's off to a, a, a busy start. Uh, I will say that for the next couple of weeks, it looks like hurricane development is going to be sort of tamped down a little bit. We have a lot of dry, dusty air blowing off Africa, and that is going to help to inhibit tropical development very likely, probably into mid-July. And after that, we'll have to watch carefully. But this is the time that you need to start thinking about it. Don't wait until the hurricane watch is issued to say, oh, man, I really should have my three-day emergency supply kit and a plan. Do it now. Definitely. All right. Anything else interesting that has uh, caught your eye about barrel since it is formed? Uh, yeah, I, I, it's just it is remarkable to see how early that storm formed, how strong it got, how it uh, also has sort of over, as I mentioned, overperforming the models. It has been slow to uh, to, to weaken. And it's going to be interesting to see what uh, happens as it crosses into the Gulf of Mexico. Over the weekend. Monday morning, probably, along the South Texas coast. It seems to be, at this point at least, the most likely point of landfall in the United States. Okay. We'll keep an eye on it. Thank you, Brian. And thank you for listening to the WRL Daily Download. Another great way to get WRL news is the Morning Briefing Newsletter. It's a daily email that's waiting in your inbox every morning with local news, events, and headlines to get you ready for the day. Sign up at WRL.com newsletter.